Blessings this morning. Today is Pentecost Sunday, the Sunday where we celebrate the birth of the church, the Sunday we celebrate something new. The Holy Spirit came to the disciples, and the Holy Spirit still comes to you and to me every single day. It wasn't just that the disciples were in the right place at the right time, but that was the day that it happened. And the Holy Spirit still works and lives in each of us yet today. So today we're going to reflect a little bit on the difference in our lives when we open ourselves up to receive the Holy Spirit. When we are open to letting the Holy Spirit guide us and lead our steps and our hearts and our minds. So I invite you to pray with me. Graceful and loving God. The Holy Spirit descends on us like a dove, bringing us peace and compassion. The Holy Spirit also comes like a breath of fresh air, bringing us new life and renewal. And the Holy Spirit enters our lives like fire, bringing us energy so that we can bear witness to your story. Spirit of the living God, we ask that you fill us and guide us as we seek to listen to your message and follow your ways. Amen. When we celebrate birthdays and other lifetime milestones, we often tell stories of days, years, and experiences that led up to that celebration. So maybe the best way to celebrate the church's birthday is to retell the story. Now, we've heard the story. We hear the story. We lived the story. Pentecost is a story of transformation, a transformation of Jesus' disciples through the power of the Holy Spirit. They were changed. They were different people after that day. After the resurrection, but before that day of Pentecost, the disciples still didn't really recognize who Jesus was, even though they had traveled many miles, even though they had ministered with him and alongside him, even though they had lived with him for years, the disciples still didn't even stick with Jesus when he was arrested and crucified. And just as he promised, he rose from the dead and they still struggled But on this day of Pentecost, those once timid, unsure disciples were so filled up with the Holy Spirit that they became confident and fearless leaders. On the day of Pentecost, the disciples of Jesus confidently proclaimed the good news in front of large crowds, in front of some very skeptical authorities, And after Pentecost, the disciples healed the sick, brought out demons from people, ministered to all of the people on earth. Some of them even found themselves in jail for what they had done. But they were so stirred up by the Holy Spirit that they just had to do it. On the day of Pentecost, the disciples were transformed and re-energized to do what God was calling them to do. On the day of Pentecost, the disciples were filled with with the Holy Spirit, and ready to go change the world in Jesus' name. This past week, Samantha and I joined with a group of middle schoolers and adults from Longs Peak United Methodist Church to serve in Alamosa, Colorado, with an organization through the Christian Reformed Church called Christian Community Service Projects. The mission statement for CCSP is to address the physical and spiritual needs of people in the San Luis Valley community in the name of Christ by helping them to rebuild and improve their lives. They connect the needs of the community with the volunteers that come throughout the summer. Over the years, I have served with CCSP on five different occasions. Each time I go, each time I serve, I am inspired by the work that they do and humbled by the great need and, even more so, 
the great appreciation for the time that we're there. Suzanne is the coordinator of this organization, and she has a passion that is palpable, a passion for the ministry, and it shines through all that she does. Whenever she interacts with anybody, whether it's someone we're serving, a kid who's tired and frustrated, it doesn't matter. She's there to serve. This past week, our group of five youth and three adults served in mission in five different residence homes. We were only supposed to do four, but we worked so hard, we got a bonus. (laughs) So we began the week helping a single woman who was in desperate need of a fence repair. We got there, and before we could even get to the fence repair, we had to get the weeds and the shrubs and everything trimmed. So we spent almost a whole day getting ready to paint, getting things ready. And that was a little hard because we were all ready to paint. But what was impressive to me is those young people weed whacked like champions. <laughs> sanded that fence by hand and even got out the electric sander for a while. Some of them had never used something like that before. And we were able to get it ready. But what was most amazing after we cleared out a lot of the weeds is that she came out. She'd come out a few times already to talk to us. But she came out and started working in her garden. She came out and started weeding. Because what had seemed so impossible and so overwhelming was now possible because someone had come and helped get it started. She was so touched by that. And I was so impressed. She called and left this amazing message for Suzanne that said, I want you to tell those kids that they were angels, that they saved my... I mean, it was just she went on about how wonderful these kids were. And she thought we were done, but we were coming back the next day. So I got to see her again. So we sanded and then we painted and we painted and we painted. So we were there for two and a half days. We spent it. We still did five places. We were there two and a half days. So we did, we got it all done and we took the, and we painted and we got the fence. And for some, they're like, well, it's just a fence. It doesn't need, she didn't really need it. But she did because it was something that there were broken parts to it. It was falling apart. And if you wait till a point where it's destroyed, it's a lot harder. And it was important to her. And that's what mattered. And so we have a lot of discussions about why we do mission. It's not because we think it's important. It's not because we think that that's what needs to be done. It's because that is a need and we're there to help. That second day, we also went down the street to a family who had an, a stair inside their, from their lower level up to their loft level, and one of the stairs had fallen through. And so for as I don't know how long, they've been hiking their leg <laughs> over that step so they wouldn't fall through because um, there was carpet lining it, so it was complicated to get to. So we went over the day before, and the, our site coordinator was there, and he measured it all out. And they went and put it together, and the little boy that was there, which possibly could have been the one who broke the step. We don't know that for sure. But he was so excited because his little legs were a little harder to go over the big step. So he walked up the steps, and he was so excited to have his stair back. Again, something that might seem easy, but was so hard for them. And so hard to get done that we were able to do that in just a little bit of time, but a difference that it made in their lives. Our final two days of the week, we did a whole lot of weeding. And if you know me, (laughs) that's not my thing. (laughs) And Suzanne always laughs because it's always weeding. And she goes, I know you don't like it. I'm like, it's okay. This is what I do. It's okay. We mowed the weeds. We trimmed. I've never trimmed so many lilac bushes in my life. But we trimmed lilac bushes. They mowed the lawns. We mowed the weeds. We tr- weed whacked. They learned how to use power tools I'd never used before. It was very exciting. And the last day we went on our bonus day, we went to this lady's house. Um, and she, many years ago, had breast cancer. Before that, she'd had a brain aneurysm. And because of the chemo from her breast cancer, 
She now had heart troubles. I don't think she was a whole lot older than me. She was a grandmother, but I'm not sure she was a whole lot older than me. Um, and we were there. She had this big land, and her grandson used to mow, but he wasn't able to take care of it, so she needed someone to get it taken care of so that they wouldn't get fined. So we did that, and then as we were walking around, and she was, we were talking to her, she had a screen door in the front and the back, and the screen was like taped on with not really good weather stripping, and the back door, she couldn't even get the door open. And so we said, well, let's see if we can fix it. We couldn't fix it. So I said, all right, we're getting new doors. So we got our new doors. And so then another new skill was how to hang a screen door in a not flush hole. <laughs> But when she found out, she went to go to her doctor's appointment, and we figured out what we were going to do, and we came back. Her, daughter, her granddaughter was there, and she's like, don't tell her. I'm going to be a surprise. And she saw the doors, and her face lit up because she was going to be able to use her spring doors in the summer, be able to let the air flow through. And her story was just so amazing to me that she survived, and the attitude that she has still in all of this, she can tell that she loves what she, where she is. She loves supporting her grandkids. She had, and this is my, my personal gift that I got from her because I was in love with the shirt. And she, she had shirts for every sport because her grandkids played on the sports for Alamosa. And if you don't know Alamosa's mascot, it's the mean moose because that's the best mascot. And she had a shirt like this. And I love, it had the heartbeat on there and had this mean moose. And so she's just, let me find out. So she called her daughter, and her daughter found one. And they brought it over to me. I don't know if it was their own shirt. The shirt off their own back, is that's what comes to mind. And I asked what, and she said, no, no, it's a gift, because we're so thankful that you guys are here. And I said, I will wear this shirt with honor and with pride. And I'm reminded every time I go on a mission trip, every time I go and serve, this Holy Spirit is filling me up to a point where it bursts out, to a point where I can't help but help. But I receive that filling up again by everybody that I talk to. When you hear their stories, when you see the gratitude for something that maybe we often take for granted, and remember that, that the Holy Spirit is working in us, it's working in everybody that we are part of. And part of when we're called to be the church, we're called to be the church everywhere. We're called to build up the church, as I said in the church message. It's not building a building. It's building up our church in the world. Being the hands, the feet, the heart, the soul, the spirit of God everywhere that we go. And when we do that, the church is celebrating, once again, its birthday celebrating its birthday for the thousands and thousands and thousands of time every time. Every time that we are the hands and feet of Christ. Every time that we show compassion. Every time we reach out and be with our hand or use our ears to hear someone's story. Every time we do that, we're celebrating Pentecost. We're celebrating the birth of the church. So when you leave today, I invite you to look at ways that you can celebrate the church in your house, with your family, with your friends, in your community, how you can celebrate the Holy Spirit still working and moving in each and every one of us. That's my challenge for you this week. And during offering this morning, I have some pictures. It's going to be a little bit of a longer offering, so you can pass the plate slowly. <laughs> some pictures to show a little bit about what we did this week. Some work and some fun, because you got to have both. So thank you, and amen.